Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, Khushamdi. Ji, Ayanu, Khuyamorikha. Bakhair Agile, Nihao, Juno Shumbe, Washbele, Ohai, Godzimus, Guten Morgen, Ola, Boyor, Priviet, Kaifahal, Hale Shumachatore, Ahlan Vasalan, Marhaba, Buna, Mucho, Gracias, Swabia, Bali Garayan. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning into PTV World. You watching World this morning, alongside the very fantastic, the very energetic, uh, the very prominent Ms. Shiza Hashmi and Shahzad Khan. Hello, Shiza. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. But before I throw the question back at you, yeah. I want to talk about something. So yeah. here's the thing. Along with you, I know a lot of people who have... Um, maybe maybe this was because of the COVID-19 days going on. You know, something was yeah. uh, onto them. They wanted to be productive. They wanted most work at their hands. Yeah. And so they got work and they were doing it. And I think at some point they probably forgot they're only humans, right? And there's yeah. only so much you can do with the good health is exactly. what I'm talking about. Exactly. So while, yes, you should definitely enjoy working and you should definitely, you know, take some time out to probably, uh, well, try fun things or probably try new things as well. Yeah. You should have to have to take care of your own, uh, well, physical and mental health, yeah. not only for yourself, but your family. I always say that because exactly. they are definitely impacted. Now, here's the thing. Uh, so this weekend, or rather the longer weekend, including Monday as yeah. well, you were working in Lahore, yeah, yeah, did an amazing job, mashallah, the event was great. Uh, but because you're working every single day, I think, I mean, it was not good for your health. So maybe you, you want to narrate the story yeah, for us? Yeah, I would, I would love to do that. And ladies and gentlemen, I think that this is something very important and everybody mm. needs to really listen to it very closely as well. And I don't think that for the last two or three months that I've ever had a weekend off. So, you right. know, I was working every weekend and I was working every weekday as well. I was like, okay, I'm young. This is my time. Now is the time when I'll actually have to do things for my kids and, you know, for your future. And you think about it as right, well. of course. And I kept at it. Uh, but just yesterday, while I was on my way back to Islamabad, I had another program at uh, 10 p.m. Okay. And they called me and they were like, hey, you know, well, we need you in the studio, so why, uh, can, you be, uh, can you make sure that you will reach in time? I was like, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. And then what I did was I was like, okay, I need to look fresh because I was shooting in the morning and then I left for work. Right. And then I had work again over here. So I kept on thinking about it in my head and I was preparing for it. And I was like, okay, I should probably have a cup of coffee, feel a little more fresher. And then once I will reach, you know, I'll, I'll be fine. But that cup of coffee, ladies and gentlemen, was actually my worst nightmare as well. And it's because of the fact that what happened was that as soon as I started sipping uh, the, the cup of coffee, all of a sudden I could feel as if my heart rate is going up. And my heart rate went up in such a way where I could actually feel that my chest is just bumping up and oh, down. No. And then my hands went numb and I was driving and then I couldn't actually breathe. So And you were alone. And I was all by myself. So the only thing I was pushing myself was that, you know, you really need to have uh, the nerves of steel. Make sure you reach somewhere where you can ask for help. Yes. So I made sure I stopped at Chakri and, you know, I opened the door. And as soon as I got out of the car, I thought, OK, sitting down is better. Right. So I called for help and, you know, I'm very glad that, you know, that the administration actually has parked ambulances on every stop. Oh, brilliant. So I went over there, the doctor came in and was like, you know, your BP is a little higher, but it's a panic attack and you really need to relax yourself and just get some rest and good sleep. And this is something which I've missed out on for the last two months, ladies and gentlemen, because I was working. So for everybody who's out there, I think that the only thing I was thinking at that point of time was that I want to see my kids and my parents. I want to give them a hug and I think I'll be fine. But it took me a longer period of time to relax myself and then get to home and then, you know, do all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but ladies and gentlemen, stress is for real. You, uh, never, you should never take it for granted and always make sure that you take enough sleep and you take good food and you take breaks in between. Yeah, even if you do that, Shazad, sometimes you literally have no control over your life, yeah. right? So it happens. It that, may happen <laughs> anyway. But, but you don't like it when you don't have control, you that's know? That's true. Because the brain actually stops... Uh, playing your friend, you know, the brain is brain is going the other way, your body is behaving in a different way, your soul in between is confused whether I'm, I'm going right. to stay here anymore or not. Aww. So I think you really don't want to be in that confusion, so make sure uh, enough sleep, yeah. uh, good food, and good exercise. Right, and even if something does happen, God forbid. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a good thing to be surrounded by someone that you know, probably, you know, if you were traveling with a friend yeah. or something, I think it I would have I requested a friend, but he didn't come. No? Uh, <laughs> bad on his part. Yeah, though. but when I but called him, that this is what happened to me. He was like, oh, you know what? I'm very sorry. I should have oh. come with you. All right, but you know what? Here's the thing for all of those people traveling, especially through the motorway as well. Yeah. If something bad happens to you while driving or if you're met with an accident or anything, anything of some sort, 130 Zero. is the helpline you should call at. And they will be there 
immediately. This was exactly. just last week. My family was traveling and the tire burst. And it burst like I can't oh. even explain. It was beyond repair at that point and they were in the middle of the road. Luckily, they knew the helpline and yeah. within no time there was help there and exactly. they were all safe, alhamdulillah. Yep. But well, this was sort of a long message early in the morning. Please, please take care of yourself and uh, know what to do at what time. Yeah. And know, so, uh, you must know some of the medical conditions that you have so that, you know, in case something exactly. bad happens, you know how to deal with and it. You need, you need to have a life-saving kit with you too as oh, well. It's, all the time. And, and we've done a show on that too as well. It was just a 50 rupees uh, kit where it was this disprint in it and, it and and I think there was this model exotical probably you can have half of it if God forbid you have a panic attack relax yourself and then probably move on right all right this was a brilliant message I want to say thank you so much for adding thank that. God but here's the I thing really do not want such an evening again in my life ever oh. that was the kind of feeling really inshallah yeah. it won't happen again inshallah, inshallah. but here's the thing ladies and gentlemen today also happens to be Pakistan Navy, Navy day. day and I think when we do talk about the forces um, we do talk about you know generally Air Force of course they're guarding the frontiers in the air yeah. uh, armed forces on land and Navy happens to save while the water frontiers as well maritime Very affairs yes. everything that is going on including defense including trade including you know a uh, foreign relations through seas travel what not that depends on the navy of the country ladies and gentlemen and today we are here on behalf of the entire nation remembering and commemorating the heroes of pakistan navy and praying a rich tribute for their services uh, well actually they released a small promo do you want to take a look at it yes let's take a look i'm excited let's do it Pakistani Navy claimed it detected the Indian submarine. I can also see the submarine on tactical mission system. It's definitely an Indian submarine. Prepare for mad run. Prepare for mad run. Captain of the aircraft, ready to fire the weapon now. I'm ready with the weapon. We can hit that submarine now. That's a statement, ladies and gentlemen. But to be very honest, uh, in the first place, I have a lot of uh, friends who is serving the Pakistan Navy. And ladies and gentlemen, just to be on the ship, just to be on the ship for six months, I think is something, if, if we can do that, I think from there onwards, we'll actually have to think what our heroes have been doing. And for all of those people who've actually served their entire life, making sure that they are going to provide to the country and provide security to the country, rich tribute to all of those gentlemen out there and women too as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much for saying that, Shazad. But right now we need to talk about something so important that is, uh, well, definitely imperative to talk about in terms of Pakistan as a developing country. Exactly. But before you do that, I've got a question for you. Okay. <laughs> and this might be the same question which you wanted to pose to me, but I'm going to pose oh, it to you no. now as well. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, today actually happens to be World Literacy Day yeah. in the first place. And this year's theme is? Well, it is literacy, teaching and learning in COVID-19 crisis and beyond. And, and we saw, ladies and gentlemen, in these days where it was online education, kids weren't going to school and everybody had to be on their laptops and iPads. Uh, fortunately for the kids uh, within the private schools, unfortunately, kids within the public schools, there were no learning management systems. So they kind of lagged on it as well. But what I wanted to ask Shiza is, right. Shiza, what is... Literacy poverty. You mean learning poverty? <laughs> oh, learning poverty, yeah. All right. So, um, well, I'll be very honest over here. I do not have a clearer idea, but I think with from the sound of it, it means that whatever you are even learning from an institution, you are not technically learning. Like, it tends to go away. Oh, so, so are, you, are you referring to the way we were in school? Uh, yeah. Because whatever <laughs> we learned, we really haven't utilized it in our uh, You know, that is actually what well. it is, because yeah. because this is what we will be talking about. So why were we even studying it? If, you know, if there was no utilization of all of those theorems and integration and whatever we did in life, 
why did we waste our time on it? You know, you're right. Uh, I do agree with you at some point as well. So this is where the organizations or the institution, all the stakeholders have to come in to build sort of a strategy that is effective and that is beneficial to all stakeholders exactly. involved. Now, talking about Pakistan specifically, when we talk about literacy, ladies and gentlemen, 59% on average is the literacy rate. And speaking of, uh, well, women, females, 47% yeah. wow. is their literacy rate. But this is not a good sign. Even if we look at 59%, Yes, it's lower than a lot of, I want to say, our neighboring countries as well. Yes. We are in the right direction. We're moving forward. But again, you know, my mind stops at where we're talking about learning. Uh, what was it? Yeah, learning poverty. Like learning poverty as well, 75%. Yeah. So even if the 59% of the student or the children are going to school, imagine 75 of them are not retaining what they were supposed to. Yeah. And fourth, SDG happens to be about education, promoting education, imparting education. So are we really lacking there? This is yeah. what we need to talk about right now. And that's not the and only problem as well. Okay. You know, there's one more thing. I'm sorry that I'm interjecting. But ladies and gentlemen, over here in Pakistan, the definition of literacy is a person who can actually do his own signature oh, or her signature. You're right. That's the only definition. So you, uh, you know, probably not putting a thumb on, onto a paper, but you know, you, if you can sign your name or if you can write your name is the definition of literacy. And I think that we really need to adopt to newer standards or the international standards of literacy. And we need to make sure that we impart that kind of knowledge if we are talking about that fourth sustainable development goal. I agreed, absolutely. Since we do have a lot to talk about, still a lot on our minds as well. So I think we should definitely just start a conversation yeah. with a brilliant, brilliant person over here in the studio, yeah. who I think is very apt to talk about literacy and education in Pakistan. Exactly, so and not just that, ladies and gentlemen, I think she's actually dedicated her life to make sure that she's going to uh, uh, you know, bring all the women and girls into that circle as well, where she's going to impart knowledge to all of those people, even for the downtrodden segment, and focusing more on girls' uh, uh, knowledge and education yes. as well. Yes. She's running an institution which is with the name of PAGE, Pakistan Alliance for Girls' Education, ladies and gentlemen. She's doing a wonderful job. Her husband is actually very supportive. I keep on seeing those pictures as well on my Facebook, we, we happen to be we have, uh, be friends on Facebook as well. <laughs> she's an educationist, she's the one and only Ms. Fajr, Rabia Pasha. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, good morning. Assalamu Alaikum, good morning. Wa well, Alaikum How assalam. are you feeling now? I'm After feeling great now, you know, I think, you know, I'm with my one of my amazing co-hosts. She's given me that energy, she's given me that trust. I was like, okay, you know, you will have to handle the show today. She's like, I'll do it, don't worry. <laughs> so I think I'm, I'm, I'm good now. But to get started with the information uh, or the uh, conversation rather, mm -hmm. What I would like to ask over here is, first of all, what, how would you like to highlight the importance of this day? This obviously is a very important day, not just that. What is the difference between literacy and education? Or is there any difference or not? So of course, uh, there's a uh, difference between literacy and education. Uh, literacy is basically the skill to read and write. Yeah. Uh, that's what it is. Education is much more than literacy. Education is uh, knowledge. Education is uh, uh, grooming a child. Education is much more than yeah. education is a very sort of a, a big term in that sense. And it goes on till end of the life. Yeah. You know, literacy is something that you learn and uh, and then you carry that with you once so you we are have all the good we're, yes we, we are all <laughs> literate exactly yes everybody <laughs> yes okay yes. so uh, shazad uh, mentioned a definition of literacy mm -hmm. uh, well in terms of pakistan earlier yes. in the show well, is it true that's true it's so alarming it is uh, i think you know this is where uh, um, and when we look at education we look at literacy we look at numeracy uh, I think we are at, uh, and regardless of what the stats say, mm -hmm. I, I don't really go with the stats. I mean, I can, I can go, I can tell you the stats. I can right. give you the yes. stats, but I uh, genuinely believe, given our own experiences on ground, that uh, situation is really, really bad. It's really alarming, yes. and it's a, uh, it's a bomb that we're sitting on, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and I just, I, I feel scared, thinking what will happen in ten years' time given that your uh, young population is almost 75% of the country. Yes. So there are a lot of factors that we need to think about. Yeah. Uh, literacy needs to be much more than just being able to s do your signatures. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, because literacy, at least if you're able to read, if you're able to write, then you can read information, you can, uh, you can gain knowledge if you don't have access to schooling. You may have access to other uh, learning materials, whatever, Absolutely. and at least you can gain some knowledge out of yeah. it. In Pakistan, unfortunately, I think things are really, really bad, and we really need to, as a country, and as every single stakeholder, we need to make sure that we 
actually prioritize education yeah. actually right right and actually invest in 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 uh, in people in our young people in our children Absolutely. Uh, and that's why my focus has been you know personally been on, on younger kids mm -hmm. because we know what's happening with the youth at the moment yeah. and Absolutely. unfortunately you know if you though i'm a very positive person oh. and i but we're very realistic as well we see mm -hmm. what's going on ground and we see how that is going to have an impact on our economy, on our social issues. Yep. You're looking at health, justice, everything is link interlinked with education. If and you're not educated, mm -hmm. the thing is, you know, this is why I think, you know, um, and these are longer debates, I suppose yeah. I, I won't get into it. But when you talk about education, then you see that uh, being able to present your view, for example, and mm -hmm. your opinion in a decent manner, yeah. we can't even do that as a country. We fight over everything. No, we absolutely, argue. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many things. Education is not just reading and writing, but yeah. so yes, much right. more than that. It's just raising a nation. It's building our foundation. It's a lot more. Um, and I, I keep thinking that, you know, when we think about uh, um, the challenges we have in mm -hmm. Pakistan, and of course, we, we're struggling. Uh, and COVID hasn't helped, hasn't helped any country Absolutely. in the world. So naturally, if we're economically already struggling, we're already short of resources. So, and now we're at, we're not at a better position in that sense. Mm -hmm. We're at a worse position. So we need to uh, really prioritize how we're going to invest the resources that we have. Well, th that's, so, that's great. And I think I'm, I'm going to agree to it that where you said that we actually have to prioritize. Now, when it comes from somebody who's actually running uh, an organization with the name of Pakistan Alliance for Girls' Education, I think that you're missing out on prioritizing. And it's because of the fact that it should have been Pakistan Alliance for Education for All. You know, rather than girls, I think education is probably important. We shouldn't be biased. I don't know what the concept was. Yours. Yeah, I can explain yeah, that Yeah, but you. since you are our guest, I'm sorry that I've been <laughs> no, a little okay. hard on you. <laughs> you but yes, uh, how, what do you, uh, why in the first place you had to come up with such an idea? And then uh, why didn't you make it an inclusive institute where everybody could come and get what they want? I think, you know, the, the whole uh, reason behind uh, focusing on girls education is a uh, number of challenges girls are faced with yeah. so when you're looking at stats and figures and when you're looking at on ground situation you know that lesser girls are in schools than yeah. boys yeah. Yes. girls have more challenges it's, it's for example let's just say education is important for everybody yeah. right and we need to advocate for everyone regardless of gender uh, but we need being an organization that is Focusing on girls' education means that we need to really make sure that our key stakeholders, at government level especially, understand yeah. the challenges the girls are facing. Because what happens is at policy level, when you're uh, making policies, when you're budgeting, etc., you tend to ignore the factors that are affecting girls. Yeah. So let's just say, for example, if uh, 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 we know that 85% of the girls drop out before they complete primary education in Pakistan. All right. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you and we know that the girls who move into secondary education, only one out of 10 girls can complete uh, secondary education in Very Pakistan. Much, yeah. So when you're looking at figures, you mm -hmm. see that education wise, we, did, so we need somebody to advocate for girls yeah. and the challenges that face because the government has to, government being the key stakeholder, has to make sure that special initiatives are taken place, etc for the girls to be included in that uh, in that circle. What tends to happen is given our society, as you know, it's a, a male dominated society. If a boy doesn't go to school, he can still get out, go to a workshop, learn and make an, make an earning. Yeah. Yeah. A girl yeah. has no access to opportunities whatsoever. Yeah. She is homebound. She is not able to make decisions for herself from what clothes she's going to wear, mm -hmm. if she is going to go to school or not, if she's going to get married or not, or who she's going, anything to do yeah. in her life, she's not able to make those decisions. That's what education does. Education gives you that knowledge and understanding that not just what our constitution allows you as a citizen of Pakistan, yeah. mm -hmm. which does not, you know, there's no uh, discrimination Agreed. when it comes to... Sorry? Agreed. A and, and what the religion says as well at the same time. You see, yeah. so there are a lot of things. It's not just about what the constitution says. It's not about just being modern and just, we don't need to be Western. We, you know, I, I'm like, you know, I have very controversial views maybe on <laughs> that. A lot of <laughs> feminists may not agree with I me. I got it. But, but in the sense that, you know, it's, it, it's power. Knowledge is power. power. Definitely. You see, so it's a lot of things that we, and this is why it's girls' education, though in our programs where in one of the, you know, the Star Schools program that we run, um, we, we take in boys as well because in areas when we go where there is not a single school, we mm. see 
girls and boys both are not going to school so we don't set up schools where only, only girls, girls are coming right. the boys are also engaged because that process can't be ignored i love page now so. absolutely <laughs> no but you, so you're doing a brilliant job thank you so much thank for you. that and while there are so many things that i want to take further um, among the things that you mentioned over here i think we have to begin with one so when you say that yes girls do have i want to say approach to lesser op opportunities or I don't know, they're just presented with probably lesser opportunities. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Sitting over here, Shazad, you and me, along with probably uh, some of the people who are watching the show right now at the expense of their privileged places and privileged TV sets, you, we cannot relate to what Fajr is saying right now. And I'll try to explain that with an example, and then yeah. you can answer that as well. So here's the thing. My village, I talk about my village a lot, uh, my Paterna village. It happens to be a few kilometers away from the main city, Sargoda. It's a mm -hmm. proper, proper Pakistani village setup, right? So the good thing is, while I was growing up, there was a change happening. And thank God to my father and to all the, you know, uh, I want to say the prominent figures over there, they wanted the girls to study. Sorry, study. So there was primary education. So conventional education was going on. Now that they have graduated either FSC or even done their BS uh, mm. in something or BSC, BA, whatnot, they don't know how to make use of that education that they received. Yes. All right. Yeah. So... If they contact me asking for, I want to be a content writer, Shazabaji, but I don't know how to, I don't know how to write, I don't know how to go online, find me a job, I don't know how to sell the product that I'm making yes. with all my heart. Yeah. That bothers me. Yes. This is what, I mean, yes. along with so many other things, this is where we're lacking. So how can we probably fix that? Well, again, we need to come back to our education system. Mm -hmm. the, the skills that you're uh, mentioning here, these are your personal development skills yes. you know your uh, and these need to be integrated within our education system right. so what i believe is and, and as shazad was saying before that you know you've done so much education that you're not you know you're learning so many things but right. you're not you don't really make utilize those uh, uh, that knowledge perhaps what needs to happen is you know the primary education really needs to change we really need to change our focus and this is where mm -hmm. these foundation skills comes comes in IT, for example, going online, digital skills, how to use internet safely, how to find information correctly, how to differentiate between fake information and true so information, um, uh, uh, how to communicate with people. Communication skills, something that we lack as a nation yeah. again. Uh, you know, these are the things that we need to really integrate within our education system. Yeah. And what you'll find is, and this this was this has been a problem not just in Pakistan but globally, that okay. young people coming out of education system don't know how to move forward. How yeah. to use so that education? <laughs> that education. So these skills have to be imparted. I mean, from writing a CV, it's a, itself is a yes. skill set. It so, is. you know, it when is. we run yeah. programs, we, we define that as a skill set. Yeah. Writing your it own is. CV is a skill set. Writing your own profile is a skill set. How are you going to present yourself or to your employer or to apply to a university? Exactly. <laughs> so these are all skills which we lack, uh, not just in Pakistan, but globally there's okay. been. A, but globally, I think, you know, in uh, many countries, this has been recognized as a key issue. Um, you know, d decade back when I was working in England, this was a part of our programs. You know, we would run week-long uh, personal development programs for young people finishing yeah. A levels, for yeah. example, before they could go into get into universities. In universities. Right. So these are the things that we need to realize here in terms of these very important key skills from communication, from teamwork, working together, all sorts of different things that you know are defined within your foundation skills program yeah. uh, that we need to integrate within our education system, both at primary and at university level as well. Th that's true and uh, very wonderfully explained as well, I must say. But uh, I think there's one more thing which we are missing out on and that is that world over what happens is that when a student is uh, a student uh, within a university, what happens is that there are different organizations which are going to come in for a job fest. Mm -hmm. So a job fest is going to take place, you know, they will hire people, public and private institutes, that's what they do. I think what the government is lacking in is making sure that they are going to bridge that gap in between the job givers and the job seekers. So, yes. you know, every university need to be in contact with higher education commission and whatever kinds of jobs are coming in, I think they really need to update their system so that the kids can go over there and have more avenues to themselves. Absolutely. That, okay, you know, this is what we can do. First, I think this is something which needs to be done. How? I have no idea how they're going to do it. But every now and then, ladies and gentlemen, we have seen that private universities over here in Pakistan has always taken the lead. For example, if we talk about LUMS or NAS, you know, they were the first ones to actually come up with an incubation center and then HEC followed and then HEC made their own incubation center as well. Yeah. So why in the first place, you know, that higher education commission, the authority, the ones who actually 
make sure that the university is up and running are late on all of these things. Mm -hmm. Probably the graduates or the ones they have hired are not telling them the right things. <laughs> or probably the people in Lums and Nast are smarter. And if they are, I think public and private partnership needs to be uh, there so that probably we can bridge those gaps which are in between the job seekers and the job givers. I absolutely agree with you, Shazad. And that is now we, we're sort of, you know, moving, to, our discussion is moving towards the employment industry as well, yeah. which is, well, the picture that Shazad painted, it's true, it's very bleak. Now, but coming back to, again, when we talk about uh, public and private institutions, mm -hmm. Shazad, you mentioned Lums and Nast. Yeah. It's not fair to talk about it because hardly probably 2% mm -hmm. of the population that can go to universities can afford to go to Lums and Nast. Yeah. And others would, of course, go to uh, the public institutions, yeah. Yeah. which is totally fine because the quality of education is uh, good over there as yeah. well. It may be getting better too. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where you come in, Fajr, because when we talk about the incumbent government, the best part of it is that it is sort of, you know, taking on board all the stakeholders to improve everything possible. Yeah. Exactly. You have a lot of suggestions, and I think you were also in conversation with the Federal Cabinet for Education was it and you um I, I mean suggested so many different things to begin mm -hmm. with uh, name us name some of the few so that we can further our conversation and mm -hmm. while you do that so sorry my question is getting <laughs> long but when we talk about literacy again um my questions keep in mind so let's just begin with what you proposed okay. for your strategic so, planning so, okay so Okay, as a lead Pakistan mm -hmm. Alliance for Girls Education and, and uh, given that girls education yeah. is the problems related to girls education are not understood by the masses yeah. mm -hmm. and that includes the stakeholders uh, and very few people within the stakeholders understand the problems with the girls education but nothing has been done around that. Okay. So for example, a very good decision was made last week where harassment committees were are being organized now in government schools. So that's yeah. a great step because yes. harassment is a major issue for girls when they're going into schools. So, but it needs to, uh, uh, and this is where we go wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, good step, but then when you look at from, you know, holistic point of view, there needs to be a proper forum that defines what the issues are. Mm -hmm. So there's a holistic plan there for next 10 years. It's, you know, these issues are not going to be resolved overnight. Yeah, absolutely. We need a decade long plan yep. to say, okay, these are the challenges. How are we going to resolve these issues? We don't have the resources. Where are we going to find these resources to address these issues? Yeah. So one thing that I have suggested is to set up a national working group on girls education, so which works at federal level, but then obviously engages with all the provinces as well, given the education is in, uh, a provincial subject. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we can look at strategy wise what are the challenges girls education uh, is faced with and then right. we can work on uh, uh, solutions with all the stakeholders engaged including the religious leaders yes uh, we have just signed up an agreement with the council of islamic ideology they've been very forthcoming mm -hmm. uh, in terms of yeah, because those again, were the pictures i saw that that's uh, i'm so pleased with that because the thing is you know globally we know we've got such a bad perception and there's a there's a there's a taboo attached with pakistan that people in pakistan and especially the religious leaders in pakistan do not want the girls to be educated and that's not the case that is not the case yeah. that is absolutely not the case actually when you go into communities when you're talking to parents people that perception has changed that has that change has happened exactly. right. parents right. want their girls to be educated hmm. they don't want their girls to go through what they have gone through you know but that change is there so now we need to only advocate at the top level that yeah. we need mm -hmm. to fix the system exactly. right? because true. then we can't complain if a girl has to is expected if if you if you look at uh, secondary education for example you will see that you know in rural areas in one district you'll find one secondary school for girls yeah. right and a district is not a small you yes. know village yes. you're really looking at a level. huge area right with so a very low attendance level as well exactly mm -hmm. so, so the thing is you know, what you'll find is that those schools are overloaded because okay. people want their girls to go to school but mm -hmm. unfortunately we're faced with poverty girls do not have access to good transport yes. system in the villages yeah. especially in rural areas they, they, how, how do you expect I would not let my daughter walk right. you know in these right. these days when and we know how much abuse girls face when they're out when they have to you know girls who uh, and the families who have the courage to send the girls to school and they have to walk and the mm. sort yeah. of abuse they have to face during that you know that five minute walk or ten minute walk or twenty mm. minute walk mm -hmm. we know all of these issues that we have on ground we are so tangled into so many problems right. and this is where the strategy level uh, discussion is very important it's, okay. it's important that to understand what is happening at ground level mm -hmm. so those stakeholders who are working on ground le level need to be engaged the stakeholders from donor communities need to be engaged right. so the money can be invested in the right places exactly. right. because if you want to see change that needs to happen so that's right. that's 
answer to your first question. Uh, yes, that's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. And I, now I do remember my second question. So very quickly, I'm going to do it because this is the end of the segment and you have to be quick in your answer. Okay. So since the theme was literacy, learning and teaching in COVID-19 days especially, yes. let's talk about distance learning, how it has changed the, I want to say the face of the entire education system, not only in Pakistan, but globally. Yeah. Yeah. And then talk about the hybrid uh, strategy that schools are adopting. Is it sustainable? Is it viable? Uh, should it be there in the first place? And then the future of, I want to say, all the changes or the gaps that we saw and then filled those gaps in these COVID-19 days so in terms of education. one, two, three, four questions. But they, they are <laughs> interlinked, interlinked. Okay. So go ahead, please go so, ahead. Okay, so, I, well, it, the thing is, you know, if, when you talk about Pakistan's context, so we, we were not ready for this, yes. right? So no that, one was actually. And, and we, we said before that, you know, the, the whole pandemic has really highlighted, the issues were there already, but it's just really highlighted what the problems we yeah. faced yeah. with. When you're talking about online learning, etc., again, that was just a very small privileged community true, that has true. had access to internet. I myself had to go and buy three laptops in one day because oh. all my kids and I can't find a room in my own house when I need to do a Zoom yes. meeting when Imagine. I was working from mm -hmm. home yeah. because everybody's online and there's no space left. Right. But that's, these are different personal challenges. But it, the thing is, I think, you know, uh, children interacting with other children mm -hmm. is very important. That personal connection that, yeah. that also is part of our emotional well-being, health and well-being. Your connectivity with your teachers is very, very important yeah. because that's where advice and guidance comes in. I know a lot of children who would go to their teachers when they have issues yeah, yeah, and yeah. their personal problems to discuss with. So the whole, this whole situation has really highlighted that no, online learning is not the answer for our problems, yeah. just okay. online learning. Okay. Yes, you could do things online and that should be sort of blended learning should be probably right. the, the better word that you, you have various different modes of learning going on. That's, yes, would, is a good way to do for a very small minority. The rest of the Pakistan is, has no access to internet, yeah. or little access to internet, yeah. and does not have access to gadgets. Mm -hmm. uh, girls particularly, and then we talk about girls, have no access to internet. They're not allowed access to internet. Yeah. They're not allowed smartphones, etc. sector. So um, yeah, so I think you know, COVID-19 has really highlighted these issues, and right. we really, we, it's a good time for us to sit Six back and think. <laughs> think. And, and finally, we do realize that how important it is for kids to go to school, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. And since you were speaking about religious scholars and how they're so willing that okay you know education needs to be for all as well ladies and gentlemen just a few days ago i think we did a show where we had these kids from madrasas who are making robots and doing some wonderful stuff as well so i think what we need to do is uh, make sure that we are well informed about all of these issues True. and then probably speak about it but having prime minister imran khan as the prime minister of our country i think we have definitely uh, kind of trusted his vision and ladies and gentlemen he's one of those people who always advocates about education as well and he's worked quite a lot even if we go back in KPK he's actually changed the entire dimension the way we used to see public institutes now ladies and gentlemen I think it's a different story and it speaks Absolutely. for itself right thank you so much for being here Fajr thank you so much for doing the thank amazing you work me. that you're doing for Pakistan may thank you keep you. on doing that as Aye. well ladies and gentlemen right now we're headed to a very short break uh, and I promise you it's going to be short because when we come back we're going to talk about something interesting so for people like me who have no idea what places to visit, for what season, for what type of recreation. Well, the next segment is going to be the answer, so stay tuned. Good Let's morning.
Sitar is a plucked string instrument used in Pakistani classical music. Welcome back to Well This Morning, ladies and gentlemen, with Shazad Khan, who's now back in form and energy as well, and Shazad Hashmi. And, well, you might be seeing this something different with us right now. In yep. front of us are some huge national honours waiting for to be, you know, talked about. But who do they, do they belong to? All right, so ladies and gentlemen, I think it is our responsibility to celebrate our national heroes, and that too, obviously, people who've actually hold uh, or held world records to themselves as well. We're talking about... He's been a regular on the show, but unfortunately, he's no more. And uh, he's not with us, but his memories are. And the world records he holds are with us as well. So we're talking about Mr. Hassan Sadpara Saab, who, ladies and gentlemen, happens to be one of those people who's actually made sure that he's going to be on K2, he's going to be on Mount Everest, he's going to be on Kashabram 1, Kashabram 2. So all, all the 8,000ers, uh, 8, ladies and gentlemen, he's done that. He holds world records as well. He now, on the 7th of September, just yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, actually got an award, uh, the Presidential Award for Pride of Performance. Wow. And not just that, uh, we have uh, Tamga Imtiaz as well, ladies and gentlemen. But very quickly over here, uh, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by two of his sons, uh, who are proud sons of uh, the kind of work their father has done. And ladies and gentlemen, let's be in conversation. <coughs> Very sorry. Uh, so in the first place, ladies and gentlemen, and both both of them actually happen to be climbers too as well. Runs They're in the blood. They're carrying the legacy forward. Yeah, runs <laughs> in the blood. So Mr. Arif Satpara, Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Allah ka karam hai, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And long sir, Mr. Arif Satpara, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by somebody who actually happens to be the head of tourism police in Gilgit, Baltistan. And he is Mr. Abid Sadpara. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? I'm happy to be here. It's very good that you came. And there was a little bit of a thought that your father didn't come. And there is a lot of love. And in 2016, when they were in 2016, they were in our program. They were coming to us. Today, they are with us. Thank you very much. But you can tell us about them and tell us about them that they have never told us about them. And also, congratulations to the whole Pakistan. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. This is an honor for everyone. Thank you so much, man. My great father, Hassan Satpara, was the first Pakistani to climb six highest peaks in the world, yep. wow. including Mount Everest, K2, Nanga Parbat, Gashabam 1, Gashabam 2, and Broad Peak. Broad peak yes. And he has uh, three world records. Uh, he climbed all these six peaks without using, without using supplementary oxygen. Wow. And uh, he has second world record is uh, he climbed uh, Mount Everest in just four days. And third world record is he climbed Gashabam 1 and Gashabam 2 within five days, sir. Wow. And uh, he is uh, uh, famous in all, uh, all uh, around the world exactly. uh, climbing field and mountaineering field. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And That's this is one thing. Intense. This is one thing which I wanted to ask as well, because ladies and gentlemen, every now and then we see, you know, we have been having people over here in the studios with us who say that okay, you know, we have been on K2, we have been on Mount Everest. But there's one thing which they've always missed out on, and that is that for all of those local guides they take alongside, oh, they right. take alongside them, or the people who carry their baggage are the ones who guide them and take them to K2, but their names are not mentioned anywhere. And I think that these are the people who actually have been on K2 like more than 10 times, 15 so times, times, taking people alongside them, play, risking their lives as well. So I want to ask you this question, that when any person goes with a baggage, a baggage ke liye bhi ek saath, tour guide, ko bhi leke jata hai, जो उनके साथ केटू पे चढ़ते हैं, सर करते हैं उन पहाड़ों को, उनका नाम कभी मेनस्ट्रीम मीडिया में नहीं आता, सिर्फ उसका आता है जिसने उनको हायर किया होता है और वो लेके चले जाते हैं उनको। बिल्कुल सर। इसके लिए क्या किया जाना चाहिए? इसके लिए कोई इकदामात लेने चाहिए हमें? जी सर इकदामात लेने चाहिए जो हमारे हाई अल्टीट्यूड पोर्टर्स उनको कहा जाता है सर जो लगेज कैरी करते हैं फॉरेनर्स के साथ और जो 
स्नो में जो पीक्स में रॉक्स आ जाती हैं आइस आ जाता है उसमें काफ़ी हर्डल्स आ जाते हैं उन उन पर जो फॉरनर्स क्लाइमर्स होते हैं उनके लिए रास्ते बनाते हैं फिर रॉब्स को फिक्स करते हैं जो हमारे क्लाइमर्स हैं उनको हाई अल्टीट्यूड पोटर्स कहा जाता है उनको फैसिलिटेट करना चाहिए पाकिस्तान को उनको जिस तरह से फॉरनर्स नेपाली शरपास हैं उनको जिस तरह से प्रिवलेज मिलती है पाकिस्तान में इस तरह से अभी तक नहीं है तो उनको वो चीज़ें मिल जाती हैं वो और बेहतर तरीके से उनकी हौसला अफजाई हो जाती है वो और बेहतर तरीके से वो चीज़ें कर लेते हैं और पाकिस्तान का नाम जिस तरह मेरे मरहूम वालद हसन सतपारा ने मशहूर किया है इस तरह उनको भी अपॉर्चुनिटी अगर मिल जाती है तो वो कर लेते हैं वी हैव ग्रेट पोटेंशियल इन दिस मॉन्टेनियरिंग फील्ड एंड वी हैव ग्रेट टैलेंट्स आल्सो That's true. Uh, we do have definitely a greater potential over here. And now moving on to Abid Saab. Uh, now Abid Saab, you uh, professionally a police officer, and you do also climbing. Both are brothers, mashallah, do climbing. So, from what age did you start? And did your parents inspire you to keep your legacy in this uh, legacy? Ko aage we are inspired from our obviously we are inspired from our great father Hassan Satpara mm -hmm. and Alhamdulillah my great uh, br younger brother is uh, <coughs> first Pakistani police to climb 6000 meter peak wow mashallah kaun si peak thi ye batai maine shatok peak kiya sir shatok peak akeli nahi sir mere sath char bande aur the sir wo bhi police hi ke the nahi sir police se aap akeli the ji police ke kya baat hai maine pehli dafa dekha police ko is tarah ki activities mein aur mujhe acha laga ye sun ke bhi alhamdulillah thank you so aage aap logon ka koi irada hai ki aap log bhi is tarah ke awards apne naam ke sath jod sake inshallah inshallah sir banaye aur inshallah sir we have future plans inshallah if his सम प्राइवेट इंस्टीट्यूशन और गवर्नमेंट और जी बी पुलिस स्पॉन्सर अस वी विल इनशाला वी है प्लान्स टू क्लाइम सेवन थाउजेंड पीक्स एंड एट थाउजेंड पीक्स जस्ट वी नीड सम सपोर्ट्स एंड स्पॉन्सरशिप एंड यू विल ऑलवेज गेट आर सपोर्ट थैंक यू वेरी मच जेंटलमैन फॉर बीस विद अस इट वॉज लवली टू बी इन कॉन्वर्सेशन एंड बेस्ट ऑफ लक इज वेल बट वेरी क्विकली लेडीज एंड जेलमैन वी एक्चुअली वॉन्ट टू शो द पिक्चर ऑफ मिस्टर आरिफ सतपारा receiving the pride of performance from the president uh, and yeah we need to take a look at that picture as well on behalf of his father here it is wow and he's looking at the camera <laughs> and and your father must be so really proud of course of him uh, you know he definitely deserves these award but you guys both of you are working in the same light that he was and making a name for pakistan creating a name for pakistan it means a lot to us all sitting over here to every single pakistani thank you so much yeah, for doing that so, so one much. last thing very quickly one last thing and uh, it, it is a myth ladies and gentlemen and i don't know so i'm going to ask them so there are stories that when you go to k2 or you know you go to anywhere else or probably k2 i think there was this one climber we, i i was in conversation with he said people say when they go up the hill or the mountain what happens is that they see this white lady with blue eyes and she tries to guide people as well have you heard this story before no ke ek khatoon hai jo nazar aati hai logon ko rasta batati hai upar कभी सुनी आपने ऐसी नहीं 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 सर उन्होंने सुनी तो असल ये बात सही भी हो सकता है क्योंकि वहाँ पे जो ग्लेशियर पे जाते हैं वहाँ पे डेड बॉडीज भी बहुत होती है क्योंकि उनमें से कोई भी हो सकता है ये भी मुमकिन है हो सकता है और प्रॉब्लम पीपल आर हेलुसिनेटिंग बिकॉज़ देर इज अ जेलमैन दी ऑक्सीजन लेवल्स आर वेरी लो एज वेल बट आई हैव हर्ड दिस स्टोरी फ्रॉम ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द क्लाइंबर्स हैव एवर मेट Thank you so much sir. And they are like you really do not have to follow that lady. Follow the guide you've taken really? with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So well this was interesting. Maybe we'll go next time together yeah. as uh, with our team as well yeah. and maybe we'll find out. But thank you so much for being thank here you gentlemen. So much. Thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know as we always talk about PT we love to educate you and inform you and I feel like this is what we did to get today again. Yeah. We love doing that. We'll do that probably tomorrow day after tomorrow too. So uh, yes if you did learn something from us do let us know and uh, share your feedback on our page uh, on our Facebook page with the name of world this morning on your television screens down below yeah right here on twitter on twitter it's world this morning without a g and actually you can also tweet to our private pages which is shazad khan and shiza hashmi yep. uh, we will definitely read your tweets on the show and probably get notice of that as well you can find us on youtube with the name of with the name of world this morning yes and repeat of this show you can catch five past midnight ladies and gentlemen please look after yourselves and make sure that whatever you do you are adding to the progression of the country look after yourselves 1 2 3 good care, morning bye bye